What's up, everybody? It's your boy Zox, and we're back with some more dislike. Now, we're going to be getting into Hathor Lynn, and if this is a unit worth building. Now, to simply put, I definitely think this is a unit worth building, but we're going to get into where exactly she's utilized her build, her kit, everything that she has to offer you, and potentially what she can bring to your account. So, of course, guys, if you find that you like this video, definitely make sure that you guys like and subscribe for the best dislike content. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it because we don't got no time to waste. All right. So, first thing, uh, Hathor Lin is a wind attuned. Okay. I want to start kind of emphasizing attributes as well. She is a wind attuned fighter. All right. Base four star, epic epic rarity right uh now we're gonna go ahead and jump straight in her to into her kit so you guys can get a better understanding of what she does so, so she has an s1 that's called dance of fate so this attacks an enemy twice each dealing damage equal to 60 percent of attack if a critical is triggered then grants immunity for one turn so right off the bat you already are kind of getting the emphasis that crit rate is going to be necessary on this character all right um then on top of that her s2 which is eye of the goddess so attacks an enemy three times dealing total damage equal to 190 percent of attack with a 40 percent chance of dispelling one buff from the target per strike inflicts attack inflicts attack down for two turns upon dispelling a buff all right so this is really really huge into what she can bring to the table um this is also something that you can think about when you're using her in like different pieces of content where you want to actually be getting rid of buffs so i just want to kind of put that out there she can dispel uh, and then her S3 is Ruler of Dendera. So this deals damage to a target equal to 260% of attack and grants a shield that absorbs damage equal to 35% of max HP for two turns. If a critical is triggered, then damage dealt is increased by 30% and shield strength is increased by 50 percent so this is actually a a very very busted self-sustaining unit okay um now there's a couple of different ways that you can actually build her uh so let's go ahead and get into that oh one last thing she has a captain ability and this is very important to to know increases ally attack and ritual and sonic miracles by 30 percent so that's kind of also another like clear telltale on some areas that you'll definitely be able to see a lot of use in her um but nonetheless this is really a, a, a extremely fun unit to use so let's go ahead and get into her kit here now i'm kind of explaining my build for her um i always say and this is kind of the rule of thumb and dislike guys there is a many of different builds for units and the reason for that is because it all depends on how you're utilizing the units there's some units that you can use as tanks dps uh you, you might need them to rotate a certain way so you have to give them different like it's so many different builds right now i'm building her right now on windwalker i'm doing crit damage percent uh keep in mind uh if you actually just look at my stats overall i have about 65 percent crit rate remember critting is actually very very essential it's necessary for her s1 and her s2 in order for her to get that immunity proc and her ability she needs to be critting and in order for her to get that 30 percent more damage and that 50 percent shield strength she's going to also need to be critting with her last skill as well so that's a good margin of uh crit to have if i can get it higher at some point when i start fine tuning some more that'd be even better but that's really a comfortable spot uh but we got it with the crit damage percent uh attack bonus um obviously you can see subs i aim for speed is very important more crit damage attack crit rate uh and and then of course we got the attack bonus on the very last one you could do speed but because of where i utilized her i had to fine tune her a little bit so i just threw the attack on her uh to work well with my comp right so that's pretty much that we want the crit rate as well for the second set um now i would say some other recommended sets that you could actually utilize on her that work extremely well if you don't have wind walker um definitely war machine with crit rate so that's the uh attack set um so 30 percent more attack is actually pretty good on her um and or you can do the counter attack set so war machine with counter attack because remember this s1 on counter is actually really good because every time she counters and then she crits on her s1 it's going to constantly be refreshing her immunity so that's one thing that you want to kind of take into consideration there she's going to be a really really good unit to counter certain things that require you to have some sort of coverage so really good there right um now of course with her ascensions i usually mention the ascensions in every video obviously uh attack um 
um, in defense on the first two. The phase obviously is important. I mean, I feel like after a while, I'm not going to really be mentioning phases as, as much, but rule of thumb, as always, you have to phase three the character. It's super, super important. Um, you also see you get 10% defense on phase four, 15% uh, attack on phase five, and then crit rate uh, increase of 15% on phase six. So that just, like I said, is always a really good rule of thumb to kind of see what stats really do well on a character defense even works on her because like i said she can be utilized as a tank so people that think they don't have a tank there you go you get one for free she's actually pretty damn good and on top of that she can nuke she can nuke so there is that right uh so yeah um resonance i guess i'll cover if you're to allocate uh any resonance i went with attack um, that's just like my thing. I like the, the nuking aspect of her. Obviously, if you want to go more tanky, then you can do either, uh, you know, some defense, but I would definitely say, Hey, Hey bro, throw it into that attack. Okay. So that's going to be pretty much that. Now we're going to actually show where she's utilized. Now where I like to use her personally is actually going to actually be the, um, Fafnir dungeon, right? Uh, that's one of the top places that I use my Lynn at. I'll even say working your way up. She's going to be a really viable option. If built correctly, she literally can do some massive damage to Fafnir. Um, and I will say that this does become one of those dungeons that everybody's going to want to farm. A lot of people are seeming to really gravitate to the Hammer of Thor set. So I definitely will say um, that and the Immunity um, or the Light Above set, a lot of people are trying to go for those right now. So I definitely will say that she is a huge, huge key factor. Um, and I really want to show this team, even though you can see this team displayed in the Fafnir guide, for those that like haven't really been paying attention or have no idea if they want to invest in her, I will say that one of her best pairings is with Bernice. Um, and primarily, that's like because of the fact that she capitalizes off of the shield um, that she's going to be giving herself. So, for example, uh, Bernice actually in her S3, if an ally is buffed and grits an extra 30% shield strength, remember what Lynn gives herself already is if she crits, she increases the damage dealt and gives herself shield strength of 50%. So this is already granting her shield that already is going to be absorbed or equal to 35% of her max HP for two turns with an additional 50% on it. And then with Bernice on top of that, that's another freaking 30% shield, bro. So when we're talking about a tanky combination, my god this this really makes her a stupid stupid tanky unit and that's not even factoring in if there's someone with an adamantine set on i'm talking about a massive chunk of shield okay now let's get into the fight so i'm going to break this down a little bit and i actually want to kind of show like some damage scaling of like how hard she can actually hit uh so okay we got that defense break uh if we were to use the s3 here it would be okay but we're gonna go ahead and bypass that because i want to kind of show that extra shield she gets uh going into the next wave so we're going ahead and use uh die to nuke that uh s1 let's see if we can get the proc so there we go enough crit rate to give her that immunity uh and then we'll go ahead and get hades in here so this ends up working out pretty well um i will say considering all odds so let's get that out of here all right now let's do this again we're going to go ahead and land hopefully a defense break there we go we're going to go and do our shield coverage so you see all of that shield that's on them obviously hades doesn't get it but he does get that breath of the deep stack let's see if we can land seer on the middle guy there we go oh we landed just enough oh my god i thought he was going to kill him uh but either way let's see if this crits the s3 should tell us it all okay let's see E the 75k oh okay <laughs> okay and i mean granted these are ads that are at level 60 so that is definitely a true testament of how hard she can hit when she hits fafnir literally his hp is gone so we're gonna actually act actually kind of rotate this a little slower because i do just want to kind of show the damage margin she can do on uh fafnir a little bit so let's see if we can get her rotating. She got four turns on that. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. All right. So, man, <laughs> that's so good. It's so good here. It's so good. And keep in mind, you can apply some of these strats to other comps, guys. I, I highly recommend experimenting in this game because there's still so much to figure out. And this is like one of those things. All right. So let's see if we can get a defense break. Okay. We landed it. We got the extra shield strength here. 
Let's see if we can get Seer. Are we asking for too much? We are. Uh, so S1 got that immunity coverage. Uh, we'll go right here. That's okay. And give ourselves this for the entire team. That's cool. We got that block. I uh, don't know who's going to finish this, actually. It might be might be Dai. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay. Dai finishes. So you get CC'd, which is okay. Let's go Lin. Got a few more hits to do. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. Puts us there. Uh, we'll go with our multi-hit. All right. We got Gabby. And Lin should, oh no, our Dai took some damage. It's okay. But either way, we're going to just show her damage real quick. Um, if this is on auto, I usually don't have an issue, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. And you see how hard she hits Fafnir, dude. It is absolutely insane. So yeah, man, that's pretty much going to be that for Lin Hathor. I don't want to draw this out too much longer. Um, I just wanted to show you just like her capabilities overall. I feel like in... The, I have to say, considering all factors, the fact that she is this viable in what we consider our hardest ritual miracle, I definitely say she's worth the build. But you guys let me know what you think. I'll catch you guys in the next one.